Let's go. Yeah. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, July 4th, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush, and the Phoenice Monitor today. We'll talk to Steve West. He just became the oldest man ever to qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials. At the ripe age of 39, he went 220.65 in the 200 breast. Steve West joins us right now in the Phoenice Monitor. Steve, Thanks. happy 4th of July. How you doing? Great. How are you? Good. Congratulations on uh, making the trials cut. Thank you. Something 95% of swimmers never get to say they've done. Well, thanks. Uh, I was, uh, I've been working a little bit harder lately, so it was good to get down there and do a, um, a faster time. Now, I know it's not your first trials. I mean, you've been around the block for a long, long time. Swam at Michigan in the mid-90s. You got uh, third at one Olympic trials, I believe, in the two breaths. So, I mean, you're, you're used to this. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're used to, uh, you know, qualifying for trials or going, you know, swimming fast all the time, but it's definitely territory that I had been b before, so um, I wasn't, it was kind of where I really was trying to get under two, 220, so I was happy with the time, though, that given the amount of effort that I've been putting into it, so. How much effort? How often do you train? Well, you know, I've got a family and job and all that, same as most people. Um, but I've been swimming pretty consistently about, I would, I usually go for an hour on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and then once either Thursday or Friday and then Saturday or Sunday. And I'm, I'm really lucky that here in Irvine, we have uh, a lot of different options for practice, which makes it, makes it so that I can get over there at lunch. Um, and then on this, on the mornings or the evenings, just kind of whenever it works into my schedule. So that works out for me. But so by no means though, are you doing the whole you know, doubles and six days a week kind of training. I mean, you, you're doing what a lot of master swimmers do. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going, there's no way I'm training like I did back in the 90s when I was at Michigan or, or after college when I was swimming at the, you know, at the national level. Um, but I try to, when I get there, I try to do what I can to uh, focus on, on training kind of hard. I'm not, when I get jump in the water and I, I train, I'm not going real easy. You know, I jump, get into it pretty quickly and, and push myself. And, you know, for me, it's more about trying to stay healthy and, and leading a decent, you know, healthy lifestyle. Um, I work in computers, so sitting behind the desk all the time is, you know, your body, you need to get out there and move it. So that's kind of the main motivation. Now, we obviously saw Derek Torres in 2008 not only make Olympic trials, make the team, and almost win a gold medal in her 40s. Certainly an unusual athlete, Dara Torres, but you're the oldest guy, as we mentioned, to ever make the Olympic trials cut. You're not training full-time like some people might. I mean, why do you think that you are? Are you just aging better? Are you know, guys with that kind of talent level, like a, you know, a Matt Biondi or something like that, not swimming long enough? Is it possible for a lot of guys to be doing this at your age, but they're just not? Yeah, I definitely think I definitely think a lot of guys could make those cuts. Um, for me, you know, I I like surfing and I stay pretty active. I'm usually when I wasn't there was a big a pretty long period where I didn't really get in the pool very much, uh, but during that time I was either lifting weights or going out and surfing um, and just kind of staying connected at least to some level and. I mean, part of it may also be that my weight really hasn't changed much. I'm maybe about 10 pounds heavier than, um, than I was at my peak. But I've never really gained a lot of weight or got that far out of shape. So um, I think that makes a big difference. But I do think that a lot more people um, could make the trials cuts. Uh, I was surprised to find out that I was the oldest. I mean, it never even crossed my mind that that, that was a reality. So or you know when when i think uh when you guys post that i was like are you sure you know <laughs> uh i figured somebody must have in their 40s must have done it, especially watching dara and and some of the female athletes who have done really well swimming has changed a lot obviously in 15 or 20 years since you were at your peak yeah. strokes are different technique 
Is yours the same, or have you sort of changed with the times? No, I pretty much, I think, well, I mean, I think my stroke is not as good as it was, as the stroke part of it. The swimming part has always been my strength, and, uh, you know, the underwater dolphin kick thing, I, I'm just, I'm not able to really do that very well for some reason. I think uh, I just never really got into it too much. And then the other day at Mission, I tried using the blocks that have the thing on the back and went in crooked. So there were a couple things that if I, you know, had more time or whatever, that would be interesting to, to get into. So I don't think I've really changed much. But again, I'm not in new territory as far as times are concerned. The, the times I did this weekend were times I had done before. So it's a it's, I think it's easier mentally to say, well, you know, I've already been this time before, so there's no reason why, you know, I can't. Uh, but, yeah, I haven't really changed that much, or, you know, that I, that I know of. You make it sound so easy, finding that fountain of youth, Steve. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. I think if most people could, uh, could just say to themselves, well, you know, I've been this fast before 15 years ago, then uh, it would be, be a happier world, that's for sure. Yeah, well, you know, another thing that I was thinking about, too, and, and what's bizarre about, I don't know, that I think in swimming we have this um, notion that age, you know, that 39 is some old age, but if you go to other athletic events, triathlons or 5Ks or marathons, you see a lot of older athletes doing fairly well in those events. And so for some reason, though, there's this mental block on swimming that, oh, you, you know, if you're over 30 or if you're 35, you know, that somehow, you, you know, you're over the hill, but I just don't see it that way at all, um, especially if you look at other sports that older people are doing really well in. Got any uh, big 4th uh, of July, uh, you know, uh, traditions that you do in your family? Yes, uh, while well, I have two little kids, an uh, eight-year-old girl and a six-year-old boy, and uh, we live in Huntington Beach, and in Huntington Beach, there's a big parade every year and uh, fireworks on the beach so we're gonna go down there and do um, do that like we do every year and uh, it's probably the best holiday in our city definitely uh, so we're gonna go have fun I'll probably I'm gonna try to squeeze a workout into but we'll see <laughs> and a lot of people don't know this Steve you were the original web designer for swiminfo.com which was sort of the precursor for swimmingworld.com so Thank you very much for your contributions to our company. Oh, no, thanks. I mean, it was great working with you um, and to see the growth of uh, Swimming World Magazine and, and the online stuff that you've done. I remember talking about it early on with uh, executives over there, and you guys were talking about doing all this TV and video back in the 90s, and, you know, obviously you've achieved your goals with this, so um, it's good to see the growth, and well, it's good to see the promotion of the sports of swimming. Brent's a forward thinker, so... Yes. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, and uh, happy 4th of July. Thank you. All right. Steve West joining us from Southern California. That is it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.